So the topic is double taxation and double taxation relief. Let's start. What is double taxation? What is double taxation? Double taxation is a situation whereby income or capital of an individual and company is subjected to tax from more than one tax authority in different countries. Is a situation where by income or capital is subjected to tax by more than one tax authority in different countries. Double taxation simply means the income of an individual or company is being subjected to tax more than once from different Task jurisdiction from different task jurisdiction. What do we mean by task jurisdiction? Task territory. Nigeria is a task jurisdiction on their own. UK is a task jurisdiction on their own. We can instead of us using task jurisdiction, we can use from different task authority. Double taxation simply means where income of an individual or company is subjected to tax more than once from different tax authority or tax jurisdiction. You receive an income in abroad, UK. The government in abroad in UK, they're subjected to tax. You bring the income to Nigeria again, Nigeria government said you will pay tax on the income. It has involved two countries, country A and country B, UK and Nigeria. That particular income, you receive one income in abroad, the collectors, you bring it to Nigeria again, Nigeria government say come and pay tax. It means that income, the tax you pay on the income is called Dobutization, dobutization, dobutization. So that is simply the meaning of dobutization. Forms of dobutization. What are the classification of dobutization? Forms. Generally, there are two forms of dobutization. We have juridical dobutization and economic dobutization. We have juridical double taxation and economic double taxation. What is juridical double taxation? Juridical double taxation simply means that particular income that individual receive or company receive is taxed twice in the hand of the same taxpayer. A situation whereby an income is taxed twice in the hand of the same taxpayer is called juridical double taxation. What we mean by that is, Mrs. Uh, what can let's give an example. Uh, Mrs. Amaka, Mrs. Amaka receive an income in UK. He paid, she paid tax in UK. She bring the income through an approved channel to Nigeria. Again, Nigeria government say, ah, Mr. Mamaka, you are a resident of Nigeria. You need to pay tax in Nigeria again. So that one is juridical double taxation. That, in, that income is subjected to tax twice in the hand of the same taxpayer. Is juridical double taxation. Example of juridical double taxation. Taxation of dividend. So that is juridical double taxation. Second type of double taxation, economic double taxation. Economic ta double taxation simply means a situation whereby income is taxed twice in the hand of different taxpayer. Economic double taxation simply means a situation whereby income ta is taxed twice in the hand of what different taxpayer. 
So that one is economic double taxation. Somebody received the income in abroad or a company in abroad. They have paid tax on their profit. They now you, you are one of their investors. They now pay you a dividend from the profit. When you now receive the dividend in Nigeria, Nigeria government now said, ah, come and pay tax. Abroad, they have removed tax on the profits before they declare the dividend. They now declare the dividend. One of their shareholders is now in Nigeria. Then Gira government now says, since it's a foreign dividend, you need to come and pay tax. So that one is what? Economic double taxation. Economic double taxation. So that is meaning of economic double taxation. So that is economic deputization. Now let's look at another concept under this deputization and deputization. What is deputization agreements? Deputization agreements. What is deputization agreement? Another name for deputization agreements means task treaty. Task treaty. Deputization agreement simply means an agreement between two or more countries for the avoidance of double taxation on income and capital. Where two or more countries enter into an agreement for them to reduce double taxation. Take for instance, Nigeria and UK, they enter into an agreement that, ah, we want to avoid double taxation. They have entered into a double taxation agreement. Doctorization agreement simply means an agreement between two or more countries for the avoidance of doctorization of income and capital. Let me give a practical example. Nigeria may have doctorization agreement with UK. Inside the doctorization agreement, they may say any income that is coming from UK that has been taxed in UK, if the income enters Nigeria, it will not be taxed again. Any income that is that has been taxed in Nigeria, if the income enter UK, it will not be taxed again. They have entered into an agreement. It depends on the content of the agreement. Some of the agreement may say, ah, if the income has been taxed in UK, if you enter Nigeria, instead of Nigeria government to collect 30% tax, they will collect 15%. If the income has been taxed, in Nigeria, if it's going to UK, instead of UK to collect 20% income tax, company income tax, they will tax 10%. It depends on the content of the agreement. So an agreement between two or more countries for the avoidance of double taxation of income and capital is called double taxation agreement. Another name for double taxation agreement, tax treaty. Under this deputization agreement, we have something called multilateral treaty, where more than two countries sign an agreement among themselves for the avoidance of deputization of income. That one is called multilateral treaty. Example of multilateral treaty, West Africa, they sign an agreement among the, all the West Africa countries that there should be a free trade zone among West, West Africa country, that some goods should be, if they can trade it free without any tax within the West Africa country. You understand? So ECOWAS, West Africa, they sign an agreement among them. That one is multilateral treaty. They want to avoid double taxation on any income coming from Ghana, which is part of ECOWAS, to Nigeria. They want to reduce the income. So they signed some agreement there. So that is double taxation agreement. 
objective of double taxation agreements. What are the objective of double, double taxation agreements? Number one objective of double taxation agreement: exchange of information. Exchange of information. Number two objective: avoidance of double taxation of income of income. Another objective: prevention of fiscal fiscal evasion and avoidance. Another objective: cooperation on tax matter. Another objective: non-discrimination between the tax payer. Mutual agreement procedure is one of the objective of double taxation of agreements. Let's look at this number one objective. Avoidance of taxation of, of income. Avoidance of double, they want to avoid double taxation. One of the reasons why countries sign double taxation agreement. They want to avoid double tax on income. They want to avoid double tax on income. So that is double taxation objective of double taxation agreement. List of country in which Nigeria have signed double taxation agreement with. What are the list, what, what are the list of country? UK, France, Belgium, China, Canada, Romania, Pakistan, South Africa, Czech Republic, Spain, Philippines, Italy, all these countries, Nigeria have signed up additional agreement with them. So we need to, in our, there was a diet, five mark question, list 10, list 10 country in which Nigeria have signed up additional agreement with. Please, let's know them. Five mark. Five mark can make person can make a student to pass. There was a diet that said least 10 countries in which Nigeria have signed up transition agreement with five mark. So please let's know that. And there was a diet too. They asked, what are the objectives of double transition agreements? Five objectives of double transition agreement, five mark. These are the objective of double transition agreement. In one diet. They now change the question. They say, what are the benefits of double taxation agreements? From the objective, a good student can get the benefit. From the objective, you can get the benefit if you know what you are doing. Don't say the lecturer did not teach us benefits. Ah, if I want to change this one to benefits, ah, it enable or it reduce double taxation of income is benefits. I've changed this number one to benefits. It prevents physical evasion and avoidance. It benefits. It enables exchange of information among different countries. It benefits. It ensures non-discrimination between taxpayer, its benefits. All these objectives, they are indirectly the benefit of double taxation. So don't say the lecturer did not teach us benefit. Please note that. Try to note that. You can get the objective from, you can get the benefit from the objective. So please try to note that. Like in my last class, I said you should have a class note. All this material, try to sum summarize it in your notes as if you are receiving a phys physical lecture. Please, that is how you can get it. The next edit, double taxation agreement with UK. We want to look at the content of double taxation agreement that Nigeria signed with UK. I'm suspecting this area. Question can come from this area any moment from now. 
what are the content of double taxation? Nigeria have signed double taxation agreement with so many countries, which we have listed: Spain, France, UK, South Africa, Canada, Belgium. ETC, but we want to look at the content of the double taxation agreement that Nigeria signed with UK. That is what we want to look at now. Let's look at that content that Nigeria signed with UK. One minute. Ah. Okay, I'm back. Number one content of the agreement Nigeria signed with UK. Income from immovable property may be taxed in the country in which the property is situated. That is one of the content of the agreement. Immovable property, like land and building. They are immovable property. You can't move land to any place. You can't move building to any place. They are immovable property. They said it should be taxed in the country in which the property is situated. Business profits not arising from permanent establishment may be taxed in the only, in the, may be taxed only in the country of the taxpayer Residence is number two content. Profit arising from operation of shipping, shipping and aircraft in international traffic may be taxed only in the country of residence of the operator. Dividend derived from derived by one company, which is resident in one country from a company resident in another country may be tasked in that country in which the dividend dividends one of the content of the agreement Nigeria signed with UK is about dividends. Hello, sir. Hello. Hey, Joe, sir. I'm one class in me. I'm one lecture in the Hey, Joe, I'm one class in the world. Hey, Joe, I'm one class in the world. Hey, Joe, I'm one class in the world. I'm one class in the world. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Dividend derived by one company, which is resident in one country from a company resident in another country, maybe tasked twice, maybe tasked in that country in which the dividend is derived. For the one of Nigeria, what they are saying now is, when you derive a, con a dividend in one country, a company derive a dividend from another company, that, co the, that company is now resides is now located in another country. That dividend will be taxed in that country in which the company that paid the dividend is located. Say for instance, if Nigeria company declare dividend to a foreign investor, that dividend will be taxed at a withholding tax rate of 7.5%. So, that is example of that. Another one, interest too. 
under the content of agreement Nigeria signed with the UK, they mentioned interest. That interest arising from one country paid to a resident of another country may be taxed in that other country at the rate of what? Not a read 12.5%. So all this, they are the content of agreement Nigeria signed with UK. Another heading that we should look, key features. What are the key features of double taxation agreement? If a country want to enter double taxation agreement, two countries, they want to enter into a double taxation agreement together. What are the content that will be in that double taxation agreement? What are the content that will be in that double taxation agreement? If two countries want to enter into a double taxation agreement together, what are the content that will be in that double transition agreement. Number one, the name of the two countries involved in the agreement will be stated. A, ah, double transition agreement between Nigeria and China. The name of the two countries has been stated. The rate of tax applicable in the country may be stated. Under the content of the double taxation agreement, Nigeria will say that ah, for content income tax, so the own rate of tax is either 20% or 30%. China too will state their own company income tax rate. The transaction in which double taxation relief may be applicable. Double transition agreements normally lead to double transition relief. Double transition agreement normally lead to double transition relief. Relief is an allowance given on income that has been that have suffered tax outside the country, and you want to collect tax on it in Nigeria. Before you can you you can collect tax on it in Nigeria, you have to give him some relief. So. Number three is the transaction in which the double transition relief is applicable. Another one, the appeal procedure in the event of dispute of a dispute. Dates in which the double transition relief agreement will be effective and the date, the possible date of termination. They will say, ah, this double transition agreement that we signed you is going to run for five years. It's going to start so 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 dates and end so 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 dates. So it will be part of the content of double transition agreement. Profit that will be exempted from tax. Method in which double transition agreement. Double uh, method by which the effect of double taxation is terminated. All these are stated in the content of double taxation agreements. Now, the next edit income exempted from double taxation. What are those income exempted from double taxation? What are those income exempted from double taxation? That if we receive the income in abroad, abroad government have collected us. UK government have collected us. If you take the income to Nigeria, they will not collect tax again. You will be exempted from tax. What are those income? Number one income exempted from the taxation agreement is the remuneration of a professor or teacher who is residing, who is resident. For more than two years in the country, in another country, for the purpose of teaching. This is unapplicable to a professor, lecturer. Eh? When the lecturer travels eh, to abroad for a sabbatical leave, he now went to another university for about three years to go and lecture. That university that he traveled to to go and lecture, they will be paying him salary. Do you understand? 
If you bring the salary to Nigeria, it will not be passed. Provided that you stay in that place for more than two years. If you stay in less than two years, if you bring the income to Nigeria, it will be passed in Nigeria again after it has been passed in abroad. Another one. Government pension are exempted unless the recipient is ordinary resident in Nigeria. When you collect government pension in abroad, you have worked for abroad government. You now collect government pension in abroad. You now bring it to Nigeria. You now travel back to Nigeria. We located back to Nigeria. Do you understand? Such kind of income will be exempted from Nigeria, from tax in Nigeria. Aircraft and shipping profits are exempted 100% from double taxation. Aircraft and shipping profits are exempted 100% from double taxation. Why? Who can tell me why? Why? Aircraft or airline and shipping profit are exempted from documentation. You can tell me. Okay. Okay. Because they fall under the scope of um, taxation of specialized businesses. Thank you very much. Because they fall under the scope of taxation of specialized business. They have their own special taxes. And there is a procedure, process that we follow <laughs> for computer. <laughs> Do we understand? <laughs> Please, Mr. Victor, try to move your audio. Okay. So, because they fall under the transition of specialized business. Another income exempted from tax, dividend paid by UK company to a Nigerian resident who has no permanent establishment in UK. It's also exempted from tax, double taxation. A Nigeria resident, somebody residing in Nigeria, receive a dividend in UK. <clears throat> Such dividend, UK government will not collect us on it. Because that person that received the dividend, they are not a resident of UK. Another income exempted from double taxation is payment to students or apprentice during his full-time education or training in Nigeria. Payment to a student or apprentice during his full-time education or training in Nigeria. A foreign student come to Nigeria to come and do uh, 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 to, to come and do a, a, a foreign citizen come to Nigeria. Yeah, he, he now come and learn in Nigeria to come and uh, enter enroll in a particular course in Nigeria. So he was admitted into a university. If they are now paying him, the Nigeria government is now paying him some benefit, such kind of benefit, if he take it to his own country, it's not going to be taxed. Likewise, too, a Nigeria student. Now you go, you receive an 
you apply for an admission in abroad. You are, you are not given a, a, a admission to study master in abroad. During your master, eh, they are now paying you some uh, token. Such token, if you take it back to Nigeria, is not going to be a task. It's going to be exempted from deputization. So those are all the income exempted from deputization. The next setting now is major method of eliminating deputization. If you want to eliminate deputization, what are the methods of eliminating it? It's either we give exemption, we exempt some income from deputization, like those income have listed above. They are, they are all those income I listed above, all this income I listed above, they are fall, they fall under exemption method. It can be full exemption or exemption with progression method. Another one, credit method. Credit method is saying that such kind of income that has been subjected to tax in abroad, if they come to Nigeria, before we can tax it in Nigeria, we have to give them some little credit, little relief. That one is called double taxation relief. Credit method. That one is called double taxation relief. So those are the two methods of exempting income, eliminating, those are the two methods of eliminating double taxation. So those are the two methods. There are two methods of eliminating double taxation. It's either you give some income exemption, like those income I mentioned above, or you give credit method. Credit methods normally arise through double taxation agreement or double taxation relief. Do we understand? Now, for the sake of time, let's go to how do we computation of double taxation relief? How do we compute double taxation relief? Before we can compute double taxation relief, we need to define some concepts. Computation of double taxation relief is divided into three. Computation for resident company, computation for non-resident company, and computation for resident individual and non-resident individual. When we want to compute double taxation relief, double taxation relief means credit that you want to give to income that have suffered tax in abroad. Before you tax it in Nigeria, you have to give some credit. Method of computing that credit, the artillery method, it depends on City method. One method is for resident company. Second one is for non-resident company. Why the third one is for resident individual and non-resident individual. Eh? Resident company. Who is a re what is a resident company? Or Nigeria company. What is Nigeria company? Define Nigeria company or resident company. 
Resident Company is a company that incorporated or registered in Nigeria through Corporate Appear Commission. Any company that is incorporated or registered in Nigeria through Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, that company is, has become resident company. And profit of a resident company will be liable to tax in Nigeria. Now, if a resident company, a company that registered and incorporated in Nigeria, now has a branch in abroad, he has a branch in abroad. The profit of his branch in abroad will be also be will also be subjected to tax in Nigeria. Mind you, the abroad government, the UK government that the branch is located, they will have collectors from the profit. But the profit will be transferred back to Nigeria. If the profit transferred back to Nigeria, Nigeria government will like to collect us on it again. Before Nigeria government will now collect us on it, we have to give them some relief or credit because they have suffered us in abroad. That is deputization relief. How do we compute deputization relief for resident companies? How do we compute the optimization relief for a system company? We use computation of the optimization relief for a resident company. I can classify it in two ways. I can classify it in two ways. Number one way is when there is an agreement between the two countries. Take, for instance, Nigeria and UK, they have an agreement, they have a deputization agreement. The re rates we are going to use to compute deputization relief, or the rates we are going to use to give credit, is going to be the rates stated in the agreement. It's going to be the rates stated in the agreement. But when there is no agreement between the two countries, we are going to use a rate called common wealth rates. We are going to compute a rate common wealth rates. After computing that common wealth rate, we are now going to compare it with Nigeria rates. When there is no deputization agreement, First and foremost, you compute common wealth rate. How do you compute common wealth rate? Foreign tax paid all over total profit from foreign business times 100. You get your common wealth rate. After getting your common wealth rate, for you to get your double taxation relief rate, you now said my double taxation relief rate shall be lower of Nigeria tax rate. Nigeria tax rate can either be under company 20% or 30%. Lower of Nigeria tax rates, half of Nigeria tax rates, sorry. You compare it with common wealth rate. When common wealth rate is greater than half of Nigeria tax rate, the double taxation relief rate will be the half of Nigeria tax rate. But when common wealth rate is less than half of Nigeria tax rate, the double taxation relief rate shall be common wealth rate. For resident company, if you want to you ask yourself the question Does this company, these two countries that involve in this deputation, does the country have an agreement? When there is an agreement between the two countries, we use the rate stated in the agreement as deputation relief rates. But when there is no agreement between the two countries, 
we are going to comp compute common wealth trait. After compute common wealth trait, we are now going to compare the common wealth trait with half of Nigeria household. Anyone that is higher between the two will be the deputization relief rate. That is for Nigeria resident company. Another name for resident company means Nigeria company. Number two, non-resident company. We can call non-resident company as non-Nigeria company. So what is a non-resident company or non-Nigeria company? Is a company that is not registered or incorporated in Nigeria, but derives profit in Nigeria. A company that does not register or incorporated in Nigeria. But that company, they are not deriving profit in Nigeria. Foreign company is a non-resident company. They are not registered in Nigeria or incorporated in Nigeria. They are deriving profit in Nigeria. Some kind of company. They are called non-resident companies. Non-resident companies will be only liable to tax only on the profit that they derive from Nigeria. In such case, how do we compute their own deputization? If we want to compute their own deputization, is for us to compare the common wealth rate with Nigeria cash rate. Why are you in Spain? So far as you are in Spain, you are still a Nigeria resident. So if you want to define resident individual or Nigeria resident, another name for resident individual means Nigeria resident. Nigeria resident or resident in, is a person that domiciled in Nigeria for more than 183 days. And a Nigeria citizen serving as a diplomat in foreign country or in another country. A non-resident individual. A non-resident individual is a person that does not domicile in Nigeria. Somebody that does not reside in Nigeria for more than 183 days. But derive income in Nigeria or derive profit in Nigeria, some kind of person, they are called non resident individual or non Nigeria residents. How do we compute deputization relief? for both resident individual and non-resident individual. You compare Nigeria tax rates with common wealth rates. For under individual, if you want to get common wealth rate, foreign tax paid all over gross foreign income. You do that. But for our own level here, for level of advanced tax, I can we not ask question for individual. There was question for company. By next week, we are going to do a topic called non-res position of non-resident. It's different from job position relief. Sometimes question will come from job position relief. Sometimes question will come from position of non-resident. But sometimes students normally confuse. When they are solving position of non-resident, they will think it's job position relief. They will not go and be using method of job transition. But we are still coming to transition on non resident. When we get there, you will see the difference. So, for the sake of time, let's look at illustration. Let's look at illustration. Illustration one Idofin and Erigin Limited, two separate entities. A Nigeria company doing well in different sectors within the economy. The owner of the two companies decided to put the resources together and form a bigger outfit 
for necessary synergistic benefits. Consequently, a new company called Aralemi came into existence with dynamic management team. The new company decided to take advantage of free trade within the where ECOWAS by establishing a branch of its company in Cameroon. Araromi is a Nigeria company. It now has a branch in Cameroon. On 1st October 2017, the following were extracted from the consolidated financial statement of RRME Limited for the year ended 31st December 2019. Turnover over X. For the other or limited, the turnover is 3 million naira. The overhead is 1.750. Included in the overhead are the following. They said the breakdown of the overhead are the following. Included in the overhead are the what? The following. Depreciation. Sales. Pass VAT on non current assets, VAT on revenue item, provision for depreciation and advertisements, the total for both Nigeria and Cameroon. You know, the overhead is 1.750. They give us the breakdown of the overhead. This 1.750 is for both Nigeria. And what? Cameroon. The turnover too is for both Nigeria and Cameroon. So if, if you look at it, if we add 760 plus 920, it's going to give you one point. Seven eighty. Sorry, let's look at. There is something missing in this question. Let's look at the uh, next question. The next question, question two. Are they two unlimited? Was registered in 2015. In 2018, it expanded it to Ghana to tap into boom of business opportunity in that country. The director has heard of double taxation agreement with relevant authority through the company, though the company has never be, been a beneficiary. Below is the summary of income statement for the year ended 31st December 2023. Gross fees. For Nigeria, for Ghana, the total. Other income, deal uh, execution. At the end of the day, they get net profit. Additional information the sum of 2.4 million was paid to Ghana Tax Authority for the year after claiming capital allowance of 5.1 million. Capital allowance claimable in Nigeria was 8.8 .8 million. 
other income of 1.2 million is profit from non current assets. Why 800,000 is profit from disposal of government security? Disposal of government security. Require as a tax partition. Explain what is meant by computation review. B. Compute the tax credit claimable by the country, considering that there is no deputization agreement with Ghana. C. Compute the income tax paid after the credits. So the A part of the question. We should compute the double transition relief. What is double transition relief? Double transition relief is a credit available in Nigeria tax law on income that has suffered foreign tax outside Nigeria and now brought into Nigeria. The objective is to ensure that the income is liable to tax, the income liable the income liable to Nigeria tax brought into Nigeria from other countries does not suffer tax twice. So B part of the question and C part, let's solve it together. You start with your net profit. Your net profit. This is your net profit. In your net profit, you add back the salable expenses. The salable expenses. So, what are the salable expenses in this question? Number one, the salable expenses that we have in this question is loss of sale of depreciation. Depreciation is the salable expenses. Abby? Loss of sale of his assets too is the salable expenses. Foreign exchange loss provisions too is the salable expenses. You add the three of them. You can see, I've write the three of them. Nigeria, you write computation of tax liability for 2023 year of assessment. Nigeria, Ghana, total. Depreciation, you had it. Loss on sale of his asset, you had it. Foreign estate loss provision, you had it. Secondly, we have non-taxable income. There are some income that this company has received, but it is not subjected to tax. This 1.2 million and 800,000, they are not subjected to tax. Why? If you look at the additional information, he said other income of 1.2 million is profit on sale of non current assets. Profit on sale of his assets is non taxable income. Why? 800,000 is gained from disposal of government security. When you dispose government, when you sell government security, when you make gain from it, it's not taxable. Gains is not taxable. Gain is not taxable under company income tax. Like that, it's going to be taxable under which type of tax? Okay. It's going to be taxable under capital gain tax. Do you understand? Do you understand? Gains is not taxable under company income tax. Gains will be taxable mm -hmm. under capital gain tax, CGT. Do we understand? So the income, those two income, they are non taxable. You remove them because if you want to compute adjusted profit, you add the salary expenses, less non taxable what? Income. At the end of the day, you get your adjusted profit for two of them. 
you get adjusted profit for two of them. You now less capital allowance. You less capital allowance. You now get your taxable profit for two of them. You now compute your tax liability. If you want to compute your tax liability, for these two companies, their turnover, the turnover of these two companies, they are less than 100 million. So the company income tax that they are going to pay will be at 20%. Double taxation relief apply to only company income tax on that company. So they're supposed to pay 3 million 460, 466,000. But the income, the business coming from Ghana, they have paid tax to Ghana Tax Authority already. They have paid tax. 2.4 million has been paid to Ghana Tax Authority already. Do you understand? So we bring the income to Nigeria. We now say they should come and pay tax again. Before they will not pay tax in Nigeria. We, are, we need to give them some relief. I want to compute my double taxation relief. My double taxation relief. How do I compute my double taxation relief? Since we know that this company, Adesua Limited, is it a Nigeria company? or non-Nigeria company? Is it a Nigeria company or non-Nigeria company? I'm asking. Is it a Nigeria company or non-Nigeria company? It's a Nigeria company. So what is the rule for doctor? Adesua Limited is a Nigeria company. It now has a branch in Ghana. Do we understand? So what is the rule for computing double taxation relief for Nigeria company? Let's go back for Nigeria company. We said when there is no double taxation agreement, we assume that there is no double taxation agreement between Nigeria and Ghana. We need to compute common wealth rates. We need to compute common wealth rates. How do we compute common wealth rates? Foreign tax paid all over total profit from foreign business. We now compare common wealth rates. We compare it with half of Nigeria tax rate. So go back to this question now. This question of Adesua Limited. If I want to compute my double taxation relief, I will first of all say, since I know that it's a Nigeria company, what is half of Nigeria tax rates? In this question, the tax rates, the company tax rate I use for Nigeria, for I use the company tax rate I use, company income tax rate I use, which which rate I use? Twenty percent, Abi. I. I use the rate of 20%. The rate of 20%. So half of Nigeria tax rate will be half of 20%, which is what? 10%. 10%. I now, I now compute my common wealth rate. What is the formula for computing common wealth rate? Foreign tax paid all over taxable profit or foreign business. How much tax that they pay in foreign? In the question, they said they pay Ghana Tax Authority how much? 2.4 million. That is the foreign tax paid. So, That is the foreign tax paid. They pay Ghana tax authority 2.4 million. That is the foreign tax paid.
Now, go back to our common web trade. Taxable profit on foreign business. Out of these two businesses, which one is foreign business? The Ghana business is the foreign business. So, taxable profit of foreign business is 4,280,000. 4,280,000. So, my foreign tax paid will be 2.4 million all over 4,280,000. If I times it by 100, it's going to give me 56%. And now compare between the two. Half of Nigeria tax rate is 10%. Foreign tax paid is what? 56%. Which one is lower? 10% is lower. So the 10% that is lower will be our double taxation relief rate. Our double taxation relief rate. I will now go, if I want to compute my double taxation relief, I will now say 10% is the double taxation relief rate. So out of the income, out of this 7.2 million, 17 million 280, which income want to suffer double tax? 13 million is Nigeria business. Ghana is 4.2 million 280. Is the one that want to suffer double tax. So I will now say 10% of 4 million 280,000. That is the double transition relief rate. I will get my double transition relief rate at 428,000. So I will remove it from CIT of TV million 456,000 so that I can get net CIT payable of 3 million 28,000. For my tertiary education tax, education tax will be 3% of adjusted profit. Adjusted profit I'm referring to the total, the total adjusted profit. If I want to compute my company income tax rate too, it will be based on the total taxable profit for the total, it's not for Nigeria, it's not for Ghana, the total. But if I want to compute my double taxation relief rate, it's going to be on income that want to suffer double tax. Only the Ghana income coming from Ghana that want to suffer double tax, I will base it on uh, 4.2. So that is how we get this. So please, let's try to look at it. Any question from this area before we proceed? So, so the question was since if uh, there is an agreement for the right? Yes. Hello, sir. I can hear you. So the question was was state whether there is an agreement or there is no agreement. Right? Yes, the question was state. If there is an agreement, they will give us the rate of double addition that we are going to use. But if there is no agreement, we are going to put common words rates. In this question, there is no agreement. They are even stated that there is no agreement between Ghana and uh, the state is somewhere. Is it stated somewhere? In this question, there is no agreement. They did not give up, they did not state ahead. They even stated that considering that there is no double transition agreement between with Ghana, Nigeria don't have double transition agreement with Ghana. So when you want to complete your transition you look at the Nigeria business and the foreign business and total 
מועד משחק לבני תופס. עד סלל בפרסיס. לסת לבין גול. מגט לה יוסף פוסט. I can hear you, sir. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Oh. Okay. So if there's an agreement, there's an agreement, they will give yes. us the, the double taxation tax rates. The rates are yes. big. Yes. yes. They will give us. I will okay. show. I will. They will give okay. us. Instead of using this 10%, is okay. the rate given to us we are going to use. Do you understand? Okay. So you just apply it on the profit of the foreign company, on the total profit of the foreign company. That's yes. all. That is all. So let's look at uh, let's look at one question from this that don't have an agreement. Okay. Let's look at question T. Feedland Nigeria Limited is a Nigeria company that has been operating as a manufacturing company for several years in Nigeria. The company is into manufacturing of varieties of juice drinks as a result of excellent business performance in the past. The company acquired a company that was into cultivation of major raw material, such as orange, mango, pineapple, apple, banana. The company was able to achieve it in organic growth strategy after the acquisition. Meanwhile, as a result of unfavorable business climate and high cost of production in Nigeria, the management of the company decided to establish a branch in Canada after receiving a favorable feasibility report from the appointed business reorganization expert, expert Mid, Midas Touch Consulting Incorporation. The Canada branch is named CIDA Incorporation. In this question now, they have a branch in Canada. Here is called CIDA Nigeria. Limited, the branch in, in, in Canada is called CIDA Incorporation. CIDA Nigeria Limited filed its corporate tax return for 2022 year of assessment based on its result for the year ended 31st December, December 31st, 2021. 
The recent death examination conducted by FRS on 2022 year of assessment company tax return filed by Seed Seedland Nigeria Limited review some gap. During the reconciliation meeting with FRS, there was an argument between the FRS official and the management of Seedland Nigeria Limited on the correct assessment of the profit made by Seedland Incorporation. The managing director of Seedland Nigeria Limited is of the opinion that the task paid by Seedland Incorporation in Canada should be the final task since the company is the only is only an overseas branch. He further submitted that the provision of company income tax, company and knowledge matter act 2020, only applicable to company incorporated in Nigeria. The managing director was furious when the company received a reminder notice of assessment from FRS and he has decided to treat, he has therefore threatened to approach TAS APRI tribunal for redress. Your firm was engaged by the company as his task consultant to provide professional advice on the task implication of the profit made by Seedland Incorporation and possible represent, representation at TAS APRI tribunal sitting. The statement of profit and loss for the year ended December 31st, 2021 of both operation after the result of Seedland Incorporation has been converted to NERA at prevailing exchange rates and other relevant documents has been added to had been added added handed over to you by the managing director. The extracts from the statement of profit or loss of the two corporate entity as review the following. Seedland Nigeria Limited, Seedland Incorporation, the gross turnover, cost of raw material, repair and maintenance. They get the net profit. You are provided with the following additional information. Repair and maintenance is made up of repair of official vehicle, construction of additional office space, purchase of printer toner. Detail of administrative expenses are as follows. Stamp duty on increase of share capital. Value added tax on administrative expenses. Penalty for late filing of VAT. Audit fee. Donation is made up of this following. Donation to club. Donation to COVID-19. The capital allowance for Seedland Nigeria Limited in respect of plant and equipment and other qualified capital expenditure as agreed with the tax authority is 33 million. Why the capital allowance claimable by Seedland Incorporation on qualified qualifying assets was also certified by the tax authority. The Canada tax rate is assumed to be what? 35%. Required. Advise the management of Seedland and Gira Limited on tax implication of overseas branch. on task implication of overseas branch, five mark. B, compute the task liability of the company in line with your 
submission in A agreement. So, A part of the question, we should advise what is the tax implication of overseas branch? What is the tax implication of overseas branch? The provision for company income tax at 2004, as amended, said profit on overseas branch of a Nigeria company is that such profit deemed to be derived in Nigeria and is therefore liable to pass in Nigeria. It means profit of overseas branch of a Nigeria company will be liable to pass in Nigeria. Any foreign tax suffered is not liable in determining overseas profit. Asset used in such a branch will be liable for capital allowance claiming. Double taxation relief is available on any foreign tax suffered in overseas branch. So let's go to the B part of the question. We have Seedland Nigeria Limited, Seedland Incorporation. You go, you start with the net profit of the two, and you add the total to you create space for the total. So I start with the net profit, and I ask myself, what are the disallowable expenses? Even before a note, what are the disallowable expenses? Even before a note, go to the item, expenses item. If you go to the expenses item, number one, the salary expenses that we have is loss on revaluation of non-current assets. When you revalue non-current assets, is the salary expenses. Depreciation too, is the salary donation. They don't say donation to approved body or unapproved body. They just write donation. This donation, they now give us the breakdown of the donation. What are the breakdown of the donation? If you go to notes, there's a notes. Donation is made up of the following. Donation to club, donation to COVID-19 victim fund. Out of the two, which one is allowed? Out of the two, which one is allowed? Donation to COVID-19 victim fund is allowed. Uh -huh. Donation to club is not allowed. We it's add allowed. it back to the profits. Abi? So we add the donation to club back. You can see I added it back. Secondly, they said the administrative expenses. Another disallowable expenses is income tax paid in Canada. They add this as an expense. They pay tax in Canada. They now add this as an expense. You are going to disallow it. You are going to add it back to the net profit. So you can see income tax paid in Canada. I added it back. Now, let's go. They now said repair and maintenance. They give us the breakdown of this repair and maintenance. What are the breakdown of the repair and maintenance? Repair and maintenance is made up of the following. Repair of office by official vehicle. Construction of additional office space. Purchase of printer toner. Out of this theory repair, which one is allowed? Which one is disallowed and why? Construction of additional office space. Why is it disallowed? 
but it's, it's capital in nature, sir. Yes, any expenses that is capital in nature is going to be disallowed. Repair of official vehicle is allowed. What about purchase of or printer toner? Is allowed. The purchase printer toner is allowed. Then if the question right, purchase of printer. Is disallowed. Is disallowed. God printer is a capital, is an asset. It's yes. capital expenditure. Abby? Do you understand? Eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You do understand, sir. Okay. So the only one I'm going to disallow here will be construction of additional office space. So if you look at my workings, I disallow construction of additional office space. Now, let's go back again. Administrative expenses, they gave us the breakdown of uh, administrative expenses. These administrative expenses, they give us the breakdown too, in additional information. Look at the breakdown of administrative expenses. Stamp duty on increase in share capital. Value added tax on administrative expenses. Penalties for late filing of Pay tax return, audit fee. Out of these four expenses, which one is disallowed? Penalty for late filing of pay tax returns is disallowed. Correct. Yes, sir. When you pay penalty for late filing of return, you disallow. Secondly, stamp duty is disallowed. Stamp duty is just like a task. You don't add tasks as an expenses. You increase your share capital. You now pay stamp duty on it. Stamp duty is like a task. When you pay any task on share capital, you disallow what kind of task. It's supposed to be added to the cost of the capital, part of the share capital. Secondly, value added tax on admin expenses is allowed. Because admin expenses is allowed. But if the question says value added tax on cost of sales, or purchases, is it going to be allowed or disallowed? It's allowed, sir. Eh? It's allowed. Why is it disallowed? Allowed. When you pay Isn't value added tax on cost of sales, you can use it to offset your Output VAT. Do you understand? Do you understand? You know, VAT is a separate task on its own. The only VAT that you can use to reduce your output VAT is input VAT paid on cost of sales item. But VAT paid on administrative item, administrative expenses is a PL item. You cannot use it to offset your output VAT. So that one is allowed. So out of these four expenses, stamp duty is disallowed. Pay tax return is disallowed. You add it back. I've added the two of them. When I added the two of them, I get my adjusted profit. Capital allowance is given to me. I less my capital allowance. I get my taxable profit. From this total taxable profit, I will compute CIT. The question I've already said, we should assume CIT rate of how many percent? That we should assume that 
Nigeria tax rate is what percent? 30%. There is a place that is mentioned. No, we, the, the question did not say that. But if you look at the turnover of the company, all this company turnover is more than 100 million. Abi, do you understand? If you look at the gross turnover, it's more than 100 million. Abi, see the gross turnover is more than 100 million. What rate, what company income tax rate am I going to use? Thirty percent. That is the reason why I use thirty. In the last question I saw, the turnover is less than hundred million. I use what rate? Twenty percent. Twenty. Percent. Last question. But in this question, the turnover is more than hundred million. I'm going to use what? Thirty percent. So my thirty percent of taxable profit is going to give me. 516197. I will now say let's double taxation relief. How do I get my double tax relief? The question have already given me The question give me that the Canada the Canada tax rate is assumed what to be what thirty five percent. Since the question give me that the Canada tax rate is assumed to be what thirty five percent, my common wealth rate will be the Canada tax rate. I don't need to compute a common wealth rate again. My common wealth rate will be what? The Canada tax rate. If you go to my workings, instead of me saying that, uh, computing my common wealth rate, I will say my common wealth rate is now what? Canada tax rate. Half of Nigeria tax rate. I will now compare with, sorry, there is a mistake here, with the Canada tax rate, which is what? 35%. Since 35%, 15%, half of Nigeria, Nigeria tax rate is 30%. Half of it is 15%. The Canada tax rate is 35%. This place is supposed to be 35%. I will correct it after the class. What that one means is that by giving me Canada tax rate, it means Nigeria have signed agreement with Canada. By saying the Canada tax rate is what? 35, if you look at this question, they said the Canada tax rate is assumed to be what? 35%. It means Nigeria, Canada, Nigeria have signed agreement with Canada. So my common wealth rate I'm going to use will be this 35%. I will not compute any common wealth rate. So in that case, in that case, half of Nigeria tax rate, 15%, Canada tax rate, 35%. Since 15% is less than 35%, I'm going to take 15% as my double taxation relief rate. So my double taxation relief rate is 15%. So I'm going to compute it on foreign income, foreign taxable profit. I will now, once I get it, I will less it from Nigeria tax. I will left it for the total tax. This is the net CIT payable. As at 2020, which year of assessment are we doing? 2022 year of assessment. 
the rate of education tax in 2022 year of assessment is 2.5 percent. 2.5 percent of adjusted profit, which is the total adjusted profit, which is this. I will do that. I can also compute for police development levy. Police what? Development levy. Police development levy is 005% of adjusted profit, of net profit, of the total net profit, which is this. So those are the tasks. So in this question, I compute for city tax liability. I compute for company income tax. I compute for tertiary education tax. And I now compute for police development levy. So that is it. So any question, any query, let's know. Any question, any query from this? Any question? In the absence of no question, we can call it a day. But by next week, before we start taxation of non resident we will look at one more question for me. Please try to revise it and look at it. We look at one more question from this. We look at one more question by next week. Do we have any question, any query? Any question? So in the absence of no question, we can call it a day. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay.